Hey guys, it's Doc, and uh, I promised I'd record the fence restoration video when I was doing it back here in the back. So this is part one. Part one is going to be cleaning this fence and how we clean it. Part two is going to be staining this fence and how we stain this nasty old thing. So hold on one second. Hey guys, it's Doc, and I'm going to break in here real quick. Uh, it's actually the next morning, but I want to do let you know exactly what I'm going to do on this video. Uh, I'm going to talk about a three-phase solution for cleaning fences that I've proven years and years and years that this was the best way to clean a fence, especially if you're going to stain a fence. But it's a one, two, three. You apply a cleaner, you use the proper equipment to pressure wash it, and then you reapply the cleaner afterwards. So that's the three-prong attack. I'm also going to go over the specific equipment that I've found is really good for the average homeowner um, and talked about, you know, different little tips and tricks and little teeny products that make a big difference when you're doing this so let's go forward hey guys if you haven't watched uh let me just point you to a couple videos real quick if you haven't watched the pressure washing driveway video i go over a lot of this equipment in that and what i use if you haven't watched the what works video that's a cleaner video that what you're seeing right here is a bunch of series of panels that I actually did testing on with about 10, 12 different products and which one works best. And there was one definite, clean, definite cleaner that was the winner by far, hands down. Matter of fact, the manufacturer even sent us a message to say, we love your video. Anyways, so in part one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the cleaner to pre-treat the fence. And then I'm going to go back and power wash it. And why do you do that on wood versus concrete? pretty simple concrete you're you're basically taking off a layer of concrete I mean you're blasting you can feel it on your legs there really is no reason to use a supplemental cleaner on concrete unless you have stains if you have grease stains if you have paint stains or something like that then you want to use a supplemental the other thing that's important about that cleaner video is we do a full breakdown of understanding mold mildew and algae a lot of people don't understand it they don't understand the difference between algae and mildew or fungus they don't understand that putting down a cleaner only helps you for a very short period they don't understand that in every cubic yard of air that blows by me today it's kind of breezy out here there's a hundred thousand new mold spores coming in contact with your fence let me say that again every cubic yard of air that moves by here there's a hundred thousand new mold spores coming in contact with your fence if you don't believe it there's something they invented called google try it so mold spores and all these things are constantly coming in contact with your fence so really the only reason to put an application on there really is not to kill those because you're going to be removing that layer it does kill it but you want to clean it you want to make this cleaning job a lot easier so what we're doing today is we're going to be spraying this on where it will be killing the mold that's on there it will be removing it, it will be cleaning it, but it makes power washing that much easier and that's less pressure and a less aggressiveness I have to use on my fence. Now, when it comes to wood, <clears throat> definitely cleaning a deck and railings are different than cleaning a fence. And let me tell you why. When you put pressure on wood, wood has hard grain and soft, hard and soft, hard and soft, and those are sort of the growth rings. The hard ones are the actual outer bark sort of growth rings, the darker ones, and then the softer ones are the lighter ones in between. Now, if you put a bunch of pressure and you go in there and blast, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna have that ridging effect where you actually get ridges and it's not gonna be smooth anymore. The wood's not gonna be smooth. So if you're doing a surface that you're gonna walk on or a handrail that you're gonna touch, you're definitely gonna to wanna to use a lot more cleaner and a lot less pressure because you don't wanna striate that wood. You don't wanna create grooves in that wood. So you definitely wanna use as much cleaner as possible to get as much of the stuff off and gently pressure wash a wood deck or anything that's on a flat surface. So if it's on a flat surface, you wanna be very gentle with it. When it comes to a fence, no one's gonna come near it. No one's gonna to touch it. You can blast away. I don't care if it striates the wood on this. I just wanna get it clean because I'm prepping it for stain. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the equipment that I'm gonna use. Um, and just to preface this, I've done commercial pressure washing. I've used the world's most powerful equipment, big truck mounted, high pressure, hot water equipment, all the way down to stupid little things that are just like, man, this doesn't work. I've even tried electric ones. A friend of mine has an electric one. I was like, dude, unplug this thing. I'm not using it. Just not enough pressure. 
But I'm going to show you the unit. Um, it's up on my product links. If you go to the website howtowithdoc.com, you'll see I have a product link page. And this was the winner in the valuations I did for the average homeowner. Number one, you'll never want any more pressure. 3,200 PSI is a good amount of pressure. Um, 2.5 gallons per minute is plenty of cleaning for the average homeowner. If you're going to do sidewalks, driveways, houses, fences, decks, this thing is perfect. The reason why I chose this one is because it's very small, it's very lightweight, it's very portable. And let's face it, you put away a pressure washer and you use it how many times a year? Maybe four or five times a year? That's it. You're going to use it for how long? Maybe 20 hours at a shot? For me, I have a massive fence. So I actually paid my son to do the inside of the fence. Um, I was paying him like $15, $20 an hour to power wash the fence. He's in college, needed money, get out there and work. So, uh, but this is, this is by far, I love this. Unit. All right, so let me go over, I'm gonna go over this kind of quickly, so stick with me here. So this is the unit that I bought, it's up on the website. It's the Simpsons, the 3200 PSI 2.5, and it's very small, as you can see. So there's my foot, there's the unit, but it has a ton of pressure on it. It has the Honda engine on it. These Honda engines, we have four of these engines, the GCs at the shop, 190s. We actually have them in water pumps. Never had an issue with them. Ever. I know a lot of people say, well, it's a small engine. It's, they're great little engines uh, if you want something that weighs about half the weight of a normal one. The next thing I'm going to talk to you about real quick is the reason why I like this unit too is it has a feed line versus a tank. Some of these units come with supplemental tanks, and the problem is, is there's no way usually to empty those tanks. So if you're going to put a cleaner in the tank, you can't empty that tank out, and it sits there, and it gums up. The nice thing about this is you just pull this hose out when you're done and, and flush it out, flush that, that stuff out. Now, my little suggestions. Of course, you need a redneck solution. Uh, this is Gorilla Tape I have on here, and I actually put a loop of Gorilla Tape up to here stuff does not come off by the way I fold it so it doesn't stick and I actually have my cleaner um, sitting right on this and the tube right into this now if you notice I just cut a little slot that holds that tube in there nice cut a little slot in there that's and so now everything go everything moves with me I could just replace this gallon as I go next this little green accessory that I have a link on the website for See how far back the hose connection is on most of these power pressure washers? This extends it out to where it's nice and easy. The next thing is, is um, at some point in time, you're going to want to shut the hose pressure, the hose off. And so I put a valve on here. Um, I do put that valve on before I go. And of course, I use the larger, not the half inch. This is the 5 8 uh, hose that I have a link to on the website. This is a zero G hose that I absolutely love. So, is there anything else? Oh, I do have an extension wand on here today, so I can stay a little bit drier. There's a link to that on the website. So, uh, the cleaner that I'm using today is the 30 second cleaner. Uh, the one that I use, there's a link on the website. You can actually order it just right off Amazon, and you can get a, get a two gallon or four gallon uh, case pack on it. By the way, on this Simpson pressure washer, the reason why I tell you to order it from Amazon and nowhere else, why follow my link and read it, is because you can get the four year protection plan on this thing for 15 bucks. Let me say that again. You can get the four year protection plan on this thing for $15. If you go anywhere else, it's gonna cost you about 90 bucks. I always, all my electronics, all anything that's mechanical, I always buy through Amazon simply because of their protection plan. All right, so here are the fence panels. Let me just walk you down real quick because I'm not sure you're gonna watch the video, but we did testing on this and you can see there's a little number one here. So there's a little number one, and we did testing on this, and we tested this panel with a product. We tested, and this was almost, what, a month ago? This panel with a product. Here's the Scots. This panel, this is Joe Max. This is what it looks like after almost a month now. Here's the wet and forget. <laughs> That's the wet and forget panel. This is the one that I'm using. See the difference on it? Look at the difference on that. See that big clean panel? That's the cleaner. There's no pressure washing on this. Look at the difference. Look at the difference from here to here. No pressure washing. That's just the cleaner that I'm using today. Uh, Clorox Outdoor Cleaner. What is this? TPC, I forget what that is. I forget what that is. 
Um, this is just pressure washing. And then this is pressure washing with the cleaner. So that's why I'm, what I'm doing today. Now you can see this nasty area back here. No one ever comes back here. It's just dense wood. There's all kinds of deer back here. So this fence is just, it's just nasty. But we're gonna restore it because these things are 50 bucks a panel to replace all the way around. And this fence is massive. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna show you. This thing has a self application. You use the black tip when you put the applicator on. It's a seven, one, seven to one ratio is what it sprays out at, which is just about right. You always keep that tip, that black tip. That goes in my pocket. That goes in my pocket. And then I'll be using the 40 degree. If you look here, it tells you white is 40 degree. You either use 40 or 25. I think I can just get away with 40, 40 today since I'm using the cleaner. Now the first thing you want to do, first thing you want to do is you want to bleed all the air. You hear that popping? But it'll go pop, 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 pop. Now, it's so important to get all that air out of this line. Push it in, put up, spin. That way you know your tip's not gonna go flying off. On this unit, there is no on or off for the soap attachment. And what ends up happening is, is the only time the soap engages is when you have that black tip low pressure on. You can see it. When you push your handle, the soap will start going through the tube. Um, this, it will not engage when you have any kind of pressure tip on it. Does that make sense? It's kind of weird, but I had to call the factory and figure that out. So you're gonna do a panel, do a good panel, do several panels up. Let it sit and uh, then just start, change your tip out and start pressure washing. All right, so let's talk about spray patterns and distance. If you have a stain fence, that's already stained, you're gonna to have to stay probably, I would say 12 to 24 inches away from it. Otherwise, you're gonna remove the stain off of it in most cases. Oil-based, less so than a water-based or acrylic product. But I did do a panel here. I did do one stain panel here just to show you. We actually stained around the corner of it, but I treated this stain panel and I power washed it so I could show you that yes, you can clean and power wash a fence that's already been stained. Uh, next, when you get down to your raw wood or your old fence that you want to stain, um, you're going to end up moving probably anywhere from 12 to 3 inches away from it. And I'm going to put that on, but you're going to keep a constant movement up and down, constant movement. When you stop, you're going to leave a little cut line. I'm just going to warn you. So if you stop that pattern, you're going to leave a sort of like a little cut line into the wood. So you want to keep it anywhere from, say, four inches to 12 inches and play with it and see how far you can go and see but the key is is constant movement if you miss a spot don't stop and go get the spot come back to it and otherwise you're going to get those those variation what i call cut marks into the wood so i'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit and let you see this So 
So let me explain what I'm doing there. Um, you have wood that has a bunch of junk on it and you're spraying your cleaner on it and the cleaner attacks the junk. Now you go back with a pressure washer and you take that whole layer off of cleaner and junk. And now you have exposed wood. Go back and respray the opened up exposed wood with the cleaner again and leave it. So what I've done is, is I've sprayed it once with the cleaner, left it on there for a few minutes, power wash it. I actually changed out to my 75 degree tip because this stuff is so nasty, I wanted more power. So I went to the green 75 degree tip. After I clean it, then I go back and I spray it again with 30 seconds through that low pressure one. Uh, if you want, they make a hose end bottle, which I have, and after you're done pressure washing it, you can even do it then. Disconnect the, the hose, disconnect the hose from the power washer, put it onto the hose end bottle, and just walk all the way down this fence and spray it again. Again, it should be a two phase process or a three phase. Pre treat with the 30 second pressure wash, get that, open up the wood, get all that crap off the surface of it, and then go back and retreat it with the 30 second, which is a heavy, there's a lot of bleach inside that stuff, but there's other stuff as well too. And what you'll have is you'll have a beautiful, brand new looking fence once it dries and it'll be fairly mold and mildew resistance for a little while but then it'll be really nice and easy to stain that fence and look great so one thing I forgot to point out is when you're cleaning your fence especially on older fences you're gonna have dirt getting up against your fence and I forgot to make this point um, what you want to do is before you start cleaning up and down you want to go deep into the bottom of that and shoot in at an angle like this down at the very bottom. So you want to take your pressure washing wand and walk along very slowly. And what you'll do is you'll open up that little gap where the uh, dirt and the wood meet to keep it from rotting so much. But what's going to happen is, is if you come down and you hit that, so if I'm standing here and if I come down and hit that, I'm going to get a big mud bath that shoots back in my face. So one of the first things you do before you start on a panel is actually go along the bottom very slowly, keep spraying, keep spraying, keep spraying, and get that bottom three or four inches clean so you don't have to come in and hit it down here. Look at the junk. Oh, that's a little dog out there. <laughs> Linda, what are you doing there? You're going to get wet. You need to move. So anyways, good tip there. Okay, two more quick notes. Shut off the power washer again. Uh, angle of attack, angle of spraying, and algicides versus power wash. Oh. I don't knock products because these products have their own particular place. You can see here, this is the area where I apply the wet and forget. Now, wet and forget is really good on algae, green. If you have rocks, patio has a bunch of green, you spray it on, leave it, kills it. But this is almost four weeks ago we treated this with wet and forget, and this is still wet. And I want you to see something. I want you to look at the difference here. That is power washed. That is with just wet and forget after, after four weeks. So, <laughs> again, I'm not knocking a product. It has its place, but an algicide is not a cleaner. I can't stress that enough. Next, let's talk about the angle of attack. Um, the more straight, and dead on you are, the more cleaning power you have. When you start to shoot at an angle, you have less cleaning power. When you start to shoot at an angle like this, you have less cleaning power. You will have the greatest cleaning power when you're dead on at something, facing dead on it. Not at an angle this way, not at an angle this way. So that is where the longer rod, that I have a link on the website, the longer rod does come, into, does come in handy because it allows you not to bend over so much while you're doing this and just raise and lower your arms. You can actually get too powerful by going straight at it sometimes. So you especially see this on concrete. You can literally feel rocks hitting your legs if you go straight into concrete. Sometimes you gotta angle it and say, dude, that's just way too powerful. But again, so understand the angle of the, the best power that you get. The best power is dead on. So that's why you wanna move with it rather than just going up and down like this. You wanna move your arms up and down with it because that's where you get your most power. I'm using the 75 degree tip because it's faster actually. Even though the 40 degree is wider, the 75 degree is more power and I can move faster with it. And quick note, mainly to myself, 
um, how much cleaner does it take to clean how much fence? If you do this method where you do a pre-treatment, power wash, then spray behind yourself, I'm able to do 60 feet of fence with one gallon of cleaner based on the pressure washer seven to one ratio. Does that make sense? So basically per gallon, 60 feet of fence is what I'm able to do that way. And that's pre-treatment, power wash, spray behind me as I go with a light coat. Little note. Okay, so you wonder why I put that little hose end piece on here. So now, since I have this on here, I can shut this off. I can take it off of my pressure washer and I can use my hose end. Now this is the hose end attachment. Now I will tell you that this comes out almost twice the strength. And so here's what you do. After you're done pressure washing, get one of the hose ones and just real quickly, just run this over it, run it over it. It's very concentrated when it comes out of here. Uh, and man, let me tell you what, look at how bright that fence is looking down there already. This is in the shade. But uh, I'm just gonna set the camera up and let you watch me run. Man, there's deer running all behind here. Anyways, I think you get the idea. When you run the 30 second cleaner through the pressure washer, you're probably on a seven to one dilution ratio. When you go through the hose, use their hose end product, it's probably like a three to one. I mean, it's much stronger. So uh, again, use it, get the gallon, use it on your pressure washer, pre-treat, and go back. When you're completely done, get one of the hose end bottles and spray the entire fence with the hose end and walk away from it. And I'll tell you what, I'm gonna come back here. I'll come back here in a couple hours and I'll show you, I'll show you what it looks like. It's pretty darn cool. All right, one more note. As we start to get into these debris areas back here especially, I always like to cut in under the fence. And I've got a piece of video that I'm gonna put up here and let you see me doing that. And what I'm doing is, is I'm actually cutting, removing all the dirt away from the fence, opening it up, and actually almost creating a small trench in there. So let me show you here what I mean. See what I'm doing here? But you can see the wood bur wood wood eating insects that have started to come in here. I don't know if that might be carpenter bee. That might be turn that looks like termite. 
So what I'll do now, now that I've opened this up and I've separated the, the dirt from the wood, I will come back in here with the uh, IT, uh, IT Biffin and I'll put up a link to that on the website. If you go to the pest control, you'll see Biffin up there. Get some Biffin and come back and really, really strong, put a real heavy, strong line all along that fence down in here. But I did that all the way down here. And it's really bad because I'm back here towards the woods now. And it's really bad back in my fact it looks like there's bees or something. See the hole right there? There's a hole for something. But it looks like man, it's just all been in here just eating this crap. So you know that's never been done here. So blast a trench right below your fence, at least on one side, if not both and put a whole bunch of biffin in there. And I don't want to do the other side because the dogs are in there, but this will kill whatever is in here. It's been about a, uh, uh, been a couple hours. Let's see if it dried. It probably won't be dry. Look at how good that wood looks. Wow, that's just amazing. But man, that fence is just bright white. I mean, it looks like brand new wood. Holy cow. Let me get my hand next to that so you can see that. That is just, that is just amazing right there. How beautiful that wood looks. I'll probably have to come back out here and shoot this once the, uh, once the actual sun goes down. Oh, that looks pretty good there. Look at that. Look how clean that fence is. That's impressive. So it's ready for staining. So it's, uh, it's ready for staining. Come back here, stain this. The staining goes really quick. I can probably stain this whole fence in 45 minutes maybe. Um, and I'll be doing a video, separate video on the staining. I'll be using two paint, two staining machines. I'm going to use my old one first and we're getting ready to order a new one that I'm going to show you guys too. So, but this is just, there's Anyone tells you any other, way, any other way to clean a fence, pressure wash a fence, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. I'm sorry. This is the way to go. So anyways, guys, uh, make sure you click that subscribe button down there. That little red button down there. Click that subscribe button. Like the video? Hate the video? I don't care. Push the hate button. There's a hate button. Push hate. I'm just kidding. Push one of them. And uh, the subscription will just let you know when we put out the new videos so you'll know when I actually do the staining on this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm kind of debating. I may use my old paint uh, sprayer for this fence, and then I'm ordering a brand new paint sprayer that I may use for the back side of the fence just to show the differences between the two. That may be a good way to do it too. Talk to you later, Doc.